Kakadosh Boker Or Mesecha Bab Metzia Daf La Metchet Amud Aleph 38A1 Says the Mishnah Hamafkid We are three lines down in the Mishnah Hamafkid Perot Etzel Chavero If you're going to come and you're going to deposit fruits by your friend Afilu Hen Avudim Even if they're going to be Avudim Which means that it's going to be destroyed through eating of Whether it's rats, if it gets uh, destroyed, rotten Lo Yigabayin The Shomer is not allowed to touch them Meaning, he left you fruits. Ah, it's getting ruined. It's, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to touch. Okay? Rashbag Omer, says, Mokhram bifne bedin. No, you have to sell it in front of a bedin. And then what happens? Mipne shu kemeshiva veda la be'alim. Because when you sell it, it's like you're, re- you're returning lost object to its, to, to its uh, owners. So therefore, sell it, but in front of the bedin. You can't sell it, you know, under the table, because it's not people are going to suspect you sold it for a cheaper price. You did this, you did that, no, 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 So okay, but sell it in front of a bedin. Okay, until here we're clear. So says the Gemara, my ta'ama. What is the reasoning of the Tanakama? Why is it that the Tanakama says that the shomer is not allowed to do anything, and therefore Mimela, since the shomer cannot do anything, he just lets it rot. What's the reasoning? Amar of Kahana of Kana says, Adam rotze bekav shelo. Mitisha kabim shel havero. A person by nature wants one kav of his own fruits, the nine kavim of his friend's fruits. And therefore, in his heart, he doesn't care, even though there's going to be nine that's going to go, but he prefers thing and then coming and giving him something else. Okay? That is the first shita. So the first shita is a person by nature. And by the way, this is a lot of musar for us just to understand. But basically, when a person comes and they toil over something and they do something, they invest in something, they prefer that even if it's going to be less than anything else. Okay, very important. Next shita. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Amar, Chayshinan, Shem Ma'asan Amafkid Truma Ma'aser Al Makom Acher. There's another reason. You know why? I came right now and I left by Richard some fruits. I didn't tell Richard what they are. I just told him, watch over for me. Now maybe I made those fruits by Richard on the fruits that I have in my house. And then what happens is, I'm eating on smach, meaning on the basis that those fruits are trumot Now, if you're going to come and you're going to sell it, or you're going, so now what's going to happen is, is that I don't have trumot because you just sold it, and now the money is kilu chulin, right? Because the other guy is also eating it like normal food. and you're, So then it comes out that I'm eating food with untied because of that. So because of such a gizera, we're not allowed to sell it. Meitve. So we're going to ask the following question. Hamafkid perot etzel chaverov. You're going to be mafkid perot by your friend. And you're not allowed to touch it. Ulefichach and therefore. Balabai. Ito se otan truma maser. Here in the bright as mefurash coming and asking against. Um, Rav Nachman. That if you're going to be mafkid perot by your friend. The shomer should not touch them. So since he's not allowed to touch them. That's why the balabai can make them truma ma'aser, amakum acher, and he's not going to be choshesh. So bishum al-Rav Kahana, I understand that it's going to be good according to Rav Kahana. Hainu dikhtiv, that's why, hainu dikhtani, that's why it's written lefichach. Meaning, since right now you're not allowed to come and you're not allowed to sell it, therefore, that's lefichach. Therefore, the balabai can make it in truma truma ma'asrot. But according to Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, that the reason why it's a suit for the balabai to do it is because of this. So what is lefichach then? It's not lefichach. That is the reason. It's not therefore, it's not therefore, it's something completely different. So answers the Gemara, Hachi Kamar, you're right, this is what it means to say. Hachi Kamar, Hashta Damur Rabbanan Lo Nezaben, now that the Rabbi said, don't, you're not allowed to sell it, Techai Shinan, that we're going to suspect, that he made it into Trumot Masrot, Lefichach, therefore, Balabai to Seot and Trumot Maser, Al Makom Acher. Therefore, meaning, now that the rabbis just said, okay, which means, now that the rabbis just came and they said, you're not allowed to sell it, even if they're going to go to waste. Why? Because we suspect. Meaning, you had to add in the words because we're suspecting, right, of this. And therefore, since you're suspecting that this is what's going to happen, so therefore, the balabai could actually make it, Tumad Maser, on somewhere else, because of this suspicion. Which means, the chashash, the balabai is going to make it in Tumad Maser, even if it's permitted, to come and to sell it. Just, you know, he, the, the guy's going to do it by accident or whatever it is. So the Chachamim came and they instituted that, you know what? It's always a suit. 
So now since they said now it's always a sur, now they said even the khathila you could come and you could make it into trumot umas. So says the Gemara, right? Amar Rabba Baravachana Amar Yochanan. Says Baravachana Amar Yochanan. Machloket bichdei chesronan. The machloket is, is if it's going to be that they're going to go bad or sour, right? The shiur of normal. Which means, like every other fruit, is, you know, after a little while, they start getting rotten. But if it's going to get rotten more than what's usual, according to everybody, you sell it in bedin. Meaning like this, there's a common concept. So for example, let's say you have fruit. So after the first uh, two weeks or whatever, it's going to get rotten uh, 10% or I don't know what, 5%. And then you continue going. But if you have something that's going to cause it, that now it's going to go much worse than the normal of what it is, what it deteriorates. So therefore, according to everybody, you're allowed to sell it in the bedin. Uh, the banana is going to go back real fast. 100%. So it all depends on the normal, what we're saying. So obviously this argues on Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, right? Why? Because he said that since we suspect they're going to do true matam asod, what do I care now whether it's getting ruined more or not? At the end of the day, it might be true matam asod. So for sure it argues on him. But does it argue on Rav Kahana that he went and he said that the entire reason was is because a person always prefers his own than somebody else's? So answers the Gemara. Kikam Rav Kahana. When does Rav Kahana say these words? Right, that basically that a person would always want his mo- his own more than anybody else's. That's only bichtech esronan. If it's something going to be the normal wear and tear, as they say, okay. But if it's going to be more than the normal, so then he would agree. Yes, go and sell it. So says the Gemara. He says, "What are you talking about? I thought that it says that a person always wants in his own kav more than nine kavs of his friend." So answers the Gemara, it's a guzban be'alma. It's, it's an exaggeration. Meaning that, don't tell me that it's mamasha, one to nine. You understand? Meaning like the, the proportions are a little bit, uh, you know, are a little bit high over there. Okay? Fine. Meitve. So they're going to ask the following question. Nefichach, therefore. Balabai to sell tan trumau maaser ala makom achera. Balabai can make it in trumoto maaser tan somewhere else. Velechesh dalma havelehu yotemi dechazom. Why don't we suspect that it's going to get ruined too much? Vezavninu, and then he's going to sell it. The kachil tevalim, and then you're eating tevel. You understand what just happened? Which means that why don't we suspect that really be'emet, peep, it will get ruined too much, and then we said that you're allowed to come and sell it in a bedin, and then but you just made it to multiple sorts, so the person's eating from tevel. So that's the question. Answers the gemara. It's not common, and since it's not quite common, right? That's why. Um, that's why it's going to be okay. mai. Now, if you're going to tell me, right, that the perot are going to go, right, that it's going to get uh, more than normally mizabninlu, you're going to sell it. Why don't we suspect that maybe Mehmed, you did it to maso? So, answers the Gemara, ki mizabnin anami, even when you do sell it, you sell it to Kohanim. With which price? The price of Truma, which is a cheaper price. Okay? So the same thing. Why don't you just sell it to Kohanim, right, with a cheaper price? Because again, if you're selling it as Truma price, that means it's obviously going to be like a cheaper price. So answers the Gemara, this is the machlok between the Darbe Vachana, Savar, Yotem Yikdech, Chesor, Nan, Loshchiyach, Bide. It's usually never common that it's going to get ruined so badly. And therefore, V'chi Mishtakach, L'Kameu Dehavya, Mikdech, Chesor, Nan. Now, if it is going to happen that it's going to um, you know, it's it's only going to be after a very very long period of time, and therefore, right? He says, "If he did make it another place, he for sure did it before it got ruined." Therefore, when it's already bad, you can actually come and sell it to the kohanim with the value of truma, right? Even without getting the normal um, the normal like wear and tear. Why? Because we're going to suspect that even if he did come and make it to Motu Masrot, but we're not going to suspect that maybe Mehmet he made it to, to Motu Masrot only after it's going to become too bad. Meaning probably from the beginning he already did it that way. It is common that it could become worse, meaning that it's going to deteriorate in such a fashion that it's more than normal. And sometimes it happens right away. You know what it is. Sometimes you have like one bad apple and all of a sudden it just ruins everything. That normally the wear and tear, but sometimes all you need one thing is getting rotten or moldy or whatever. And all of a sudden everything around it becomes moldy. 
Right? And it just, you know, it's like a, a machala nidbeket. It just, whoop, it just uh, gets on everything else. So, if you're going to tell me to sell it, sometimes you're going to sell it. You don't know that he already sold it. And therefore, he's eating tevel. Meaning, when, when exactly are you selling it? If right now it went and it got bad so quickly, you already sold it. Now, but the problem is, if you already sold it, now it doesn't help if he's making it too much. Because he's making it on something that you already sold. Beforehand, we said, you were making it too much. And by the time he needs to sell it, it's going to be so much later, you already did everything beforehand. So don't worry about it. But here, if you do it right away, and you're going to sell it right away, when he's going to now make it to Motu Masrot on that which he has in his house, and he says, yeah, whatever I have in Richard's house is to Motu Masrot, <coughs> it's already too late. Okay, it's already too late. Fine. Another question on Rabbi Yochanan. Metve. Hamafkid perot etzel chavero virkivu. Imagine right now I put fruits by you, and then it becomes rotten. Yain vichmitz, wine and became vinegar. Shemen vivish, oil, and it became bad. Dvash vidvish. Right, dvash tmanim is basically the, the honey. And then it basically went away. It became like sour also. Hadeze lui gaben. You're not allowed to touch it. Divre rabimi, this is what I mean. Chachamim omrim ose lahem takana. Make a takana and you sell it in bedin. Okay, the Gemara is going to say, what, what does that mean you make a takana? And then you sell it in bedin. When you're going to sell it, you're going to sell it to other people and they don't sell it to himself. Meaning you can never sell it to yourself for the suspicion that maybe you're going to sell it to yourself for a good price. So you always have to sell it to somebody else. Okay? Ktani mihat. We did learn though. Perot kivu. When we're talking about fruits and they became rotten, my lover, we're not talking about a filu yeter mikdeches ronan, even if it becomes bad. And so Zagmana, no, mikdeches ronan. Mikdeches ronan means that which is actually going to be bad. So says Zagmana, no, mikdeches ronan. So he says, veha yain vichmit shemim vivish dvash vivish the yeter mikdeches ronan. He says one second. All of these things, it's more than its value because once you have wine and if it goes off to vinegar or the the the, the honey or the what the, the oil. Uh, that's more than the. That's everything. So answers the Gemara. Shani Hane. These things are different because Kevin the come come because once already it starts the kilkul, they do not become worse. So therefore, I, Rabbi Meir. I don't know where you are, Rabbi. I'm sorry. Okay. So once it becomes bad, it's bad. Yeah. Once it's sour, it's sour. Okay. Fine. Now the Gemara says Shemen vivish dvash vidbish. Right. La milchet amubet. Thirty-eight B. Lemai chazi. What's it fitting for? Meaning, I understand wine, you could sell it as vinegar. So you're right, it's not going to be the same price, but it's still wine becoming vinegar. What about now? When you have oil that goes off, or honey that goes off, what are you going to do with it? So says the uh, Gemara, Shemen, yeah, he says, Chazid legidla, legildai. Shemen is fitting for the Ratzanim. What does that mean? The ones that they come and they put on the leather. skins, on the leather. Okay, Dvash is good for Lektisha de Gamle. Dvash is good for the ones that they put it on the gamal. For example, on the back of the gamal when he's, uh, when he's uh, injured, they come and they smear it on the back of the... Of the, ga- of the yes, sore. like a sore, exactly. He's got a sore, so they put it on. It's like a, you know, something for the back. I was unaware that honey could spoil. Well, here it is. Yeah. The hachamim omanim. Hachamim say, Oselem takana. What is a takana? Umochram bedin. So he says, My takana, my takana davi lehu. We're talking about for the kankanim, which means you make a takana for the kelim that you're selling, which is inside of them. That if right now you're going to have the chomer mekulkal inside of the kli, the kli itself also gets bad. Meaning sometimes it happens that if you have something bad, it's not only it goes bad, even the, the utensil, the receptacle that it's in, also goes bad with it. Okay? So therefore, he's saying here is that the shomer can make a takana for the kelim. That's like takana. Takana means you're making something to fix for the utensils also. So, what is a machloket? So he says, Mor savar, One of them said that you only are going to be choshesh for hefsem rube, not hefsem muat. Hefsem rube is a great loss and not a small loss. So usually if it's only just the fruits, okay. But it's a, but the, the, the thing is a great loss. You know what I'm Meaning that it's going to be a mamash, a great, great loss. And Mor savar, even for hefsem muat, they also suspected. Okay. The two dots on the Mubet. Two dots on 38B. We are two, four, six, seven lines down. Rashba Gomer. Rabban Shimon Meliel says, You have to sell it in Bedin. Why? Because it's considered like a Meshiva Veda. You're giving back a lost object to the, to the owners. 
So Yidman was stated, Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Yaakov says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, the Lachaz like Rashbag. And Rava says in the name of Rav Nachman, the Lachaz like the Hachamim, that you don't sell the fruits. So basically, do you sell the fruits or not sell the fruits? It's a machloket. And even in the Lacha, it's a machloket. So, Vehamar Rabbi Yochanan, Chalazim, one second, but Rabbi Yochanan once said it. Tamar Rabbi Yochanan, Koma Kom Sheshanun Rashbag, Be Mishnatenu, Lacha Kemoto, Chutz Mi Erev Tzidan, Vevere Yachrona. Which means that whenever we have Rashbag in the Mishnah, in any Mishnah, the Lacha is always like him, except for three different cases. Arev, Tzidan, Vere Yachrona. So therefore, why in the world would Rabbi Yochanan come and tell you that the Lachaz HaGashbag? We know that already, right? Because this is that. Arev is the, the entire machloket, right? Of the entire concept of the of being a, a guarantor. Tzaydan is a machloket to do with a get, which was given in the city of Tzaydan, okay? And Raya Haruna was a machloket to do with, okay, Chachamim, there was a whole thing on the Raya that they have to bring the Bedin, right? That's somebody that's going to be against them. So answers the Gemara, Amurai Ninu Aliba Rabbi Yochanan. It's a machloket Amuraim in Shitat Rabbi Yochanan. And therefore that's why he said Mefurash that this is Zalacha like Rashbag. He had to say it Mefurash. Okay? Fine. So Mid Rashbag, however though from Rashbag, Nishma, we're going to learn, the Moridin Karov Linikse Shavui, right? Mid Rabbanan. What does that mean? If right now we're going to come and we're going to learn from the words of the Rashbag that we want to stop a person from losing money. So it comes out that they're allowed to come and take a karov to the property of a shavui, right? Which means you could take a family member to the property of somebody that's taken into captivity, right? In order to work the land and everything, in order to come and to help out the owners, meaning his family. And that's going to be done, midra banan, right? But the, according to the rabbis, nishma emorodin karov in shavui, which means like this, right? We know that right now, for example, somebody was taken into captivity. Now, if nobody's going to work his land, so everything's going to go to the waste. So what happens? So there's a machloket here between Rashbag and Chachamim, or that's what we're trying to make it, that according to the Rashbag, you would be able to take a family member, and until the guy doesn't get taken out of captivity, tell him, listen, work the, work the field. Work the field, do all these things. That's according to Rashbag. Right? Why? We don't want it to lose out. And according to the rabbis, no, you're not allowed to touch it. That's what we want to say. So says the Gimara, Umimai, whoever told you that that's true, Meaning, you wanted to say, we just had an assumption. The assumption is, Rashbag and the rabbis, and now we're trying to apply it, if somebody was taken into captivity, can I apply it also as well, that a family member, I would bring them down and start working on the field. Says the Gemara, how do you know this? Maybe Rashbag only said it, because the principle is getting destroyed. But in the case of the property of a person that's taken in captivity, right? I'm going to say also you don't take it out because there's no, there's no loss. The, pro, the, the principle is still there. You're just not gaining money. But there's no loss in principle. And when do the rabbis say it over there? If it's going to be like Rav Kana, that a person prefers his, one of his more than nine of his friends. Or if it's going to be like Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, right, that a person might have put made it into Tumot Masrot, Aval Hatamar, in the case of the property of the of the person that was taken into captivity, Hachanami de Moridina, I would say that you never take it down. So therefore, there's no proof from the Mishnah this way or that. So it says the Gemara, Lememra, are you going to tell me now the Treta Meninu? That there are going to be two different reasonings. The Amar of Yudam Shmuel says of Yudam Shmuel, Alacha Kereshbag, Alacha Zakereshbag. The Amar Shmuel and Shmuel says, Moridin Karov Nixe Shavu, you do bring down a family member to the property of somebody that's taken into captivity. Is it not because there's only one reason? Meaning it's the same thing. And that's why you're allowed to. So you actually do take down a family member to the property of the of the one that's taken into captivity. And so it's no, it's two different reasonings. Meaning they're separate reasonings. It's not like one is dependent upon the other. That since we said Rashbag and the Mishnah, that in order to look, no, they're two different reasonings. So he says, it's actually also uh, logical to say such a thing. The Amr of Amr of Nachman says of Nein Nachman, Alacha is like the Vrech Hachamim. Amr of Nachman of Nachman says, Moridin Karov Nixe Shavui, we're going to bring down the Karov to the property of the Shavui, right? Ela, but rather, Shema Mina, we learn from here, Tre Tameninu. It's two completely different reasonings. Shema Mina, that's what we learn. Kapish? Okay? Fine. Itmar, it was stated. Shavui Shinishba, somebody that's taken into captivity. Yeah, Rav Amar Rav says, You don't bring down a, a family member to his property. Okay. Uh, here, by the way, when it says Karov, it means that he's the, the closest kin, also for inheritance. Okay, that's what it brings down here in Rashi. Okay, and Rav says, Moridin, and Shmuel says, 
right? So sorry, Rav says and Moridin, and Shmuel says Moridin. You do take him down, right, into the field. So Bishamu Bo Shemet, if they heard that he died in the captivity, Kule Alma Lopligi, everyone agrees the Moridin that we do take him down there into the property. Kipligi one is a machloket if they didn't hear that he died. Rav says Moridin was Dilma Mafsadum because maybe he's going to ruin everything. And Shmuel says Moridin. Kevin Amar Mubaz more says Shamin lehu lehu kadi. So we're going to make him like a sharecropper. So therefore lo mafsi lehu. He's not meaning we tell the guy that he's working, but he's working as a sharecropper. So now if he's working as a sharecropper, why in the world would he mess up the field? He's also gaining. Me and by the way, this is like in anything in life. When you come and you give somebody a gains in something, right? The personal interest, they're not gonna mess it up. That's why certain companies, I heard, I think even Publix does it and other places as well, that every single one of the workers, they have like a little percentage in the company. It could be even a, I don't know what. That means they want the company to succeed. Why? Because since they have a part in it, they, they're not going to fool anything around. They're not going to start messing things up. So so they ask a question, Rabbi Lazar Omer, Rabbi Lazar comes and he says, Yeah? It's mashma that that's what it says, V'charapi varakti etchem. It says in the beginning of the Pasuk over there, we're talking about that, we're talking about over there, right, that if HaKadosh Baruch Hu is going to get upset, it's a klala, that if somebody is going to come and start afflicting, uh, whether it's a widow or, or yetomim, at the end he's going to die by the sword. So because of this, it actually comes out, Right? That he comes and he says, so since it says, I'm going to get upset of you, I'm going to kill you. So then obviously he knows that the wives and the children are going to be widows and uh, orphans. So, so why do I need it then? That it's going to tell you, by the way, the wives are going to become, oh, you already know that. The wives, they want to get married, but they're not going to be able to. Meaning since the, the Baalim, the, the, uh, the husbands, went to captivity and there's no witnesses that they died, so that's why it's going to be coming. Not only, not only are that Kilu, they're going to be killed. They're going to be killed, but their wives are always going to stay widows because they'll never be able to, to come and testify, right, that, they, that the, the husband died. And the children want to go down to the properties of the father. And the Betty don't let them because maybe Bemet is still alive. So look what's going to Look what a curse that was. So, the children cannot go? So this is now going according to Rav against Shmuel. Why? Because now we're saying that a family member cannot go down to the property, and even if you're close to skin. So I'm a Rav. Rav is going to answer to you. No, we're talking about going down and selling, because it could be that since the father's still alive, so then that they're not allowed to do. But they could still go down for the properties, just not not actually selling it. Okay. Um, so they're not allowed to sell. They're allowed to go down. They're allowed to you know work it, but they're not allowed to sell. Now we're going to bring a story. There was a story in Nerda. And came and he said from this Mishnah that he said, Amar le Rav Amram, that he said, that listen, he passed in, they're allowed to go down. So says Rav Amram, Dilma le Rev Lim Kortana, maybe it's talking about that they're allowed to go down and sell. Amale, he said, Dilma Pompadita, maybe you're Pompadita. The Mailem Pila Bekupa de Machta. You guys usually come and you answer like very, uh, you know, very dochak answers. Just like somebody comes and he puts like a hole, right? He puts a, an elephant into a needle hole. You understand the kilu that you have something so big and you're trying to squeeze it in. Eh. We said it's the same. Just like over there to do with the wives and the children, that the wives are not going to be able to get married and the children are not going to be able to come and sell them at them. They can't do it at all. So to hear nothing whatsoever. So it's actually going to become a machloka tanaim. Let's see. Moridin karov nixe shavui tanai. It's actually machloka tanai. Tanai was going to the right. You don't nixe shavui motzi nato miyado. If you already went down, we're not going to take it out of your hands. But not only that, elafilu shamash meshamashim. Even if we hear that he's coming, the kadam v'talash and he came and he took fruits and he ate it, he just gained. Harizad zariz v'niskar. He just gained from it. Meaning that here it comes out that you're allowed to. Yeah. So he says ve'elu hen nixe shavuim. These are the nechasim of the shavuim. Whether it could be the father, the brother, or anybody else that a person inherits, they went to Medinat Ayam and then they found out that he died. Right? Fine. Hayored Lenichsei. Yeah, he comes and he says, Hayored Lenichset Netushim. If somebody goes down to people that they were forced to go out, like for example, taken into captivity. We do take it out of their hands. And these are next the stream. Somebody that the father, the brother, or the people that they went to and they, they didn't hear that they died. So it comes out that this is going to be a machloket. 
And Rashbad comes and he says, Shamati Shai Netushin, or like the Shvuim. So it comes out that you're actually seeing that this is actually going to be Machloket Tanaim. So the same Machloket between Rav and Shmuel is actually going to become a Machloket Tanaim, meaning we're not anymore on lower level, we're going to a higher level. Okay, the third Brayta says, Hayurelin said Netushim, so here we changed it. Because here it's Retushim, not Netushim. Netushim was, it was taken away from them against their will because they were taken into captivity. Here it's Retushim, which means that they did it on their own. According to everybody, Motsin no you could take them out. What are their Nechasim Retushim? They just disappeared. They disappeared. It's not that they were taken into captivity. That they disappeared. We don't know what happened to them. So it's much more that they just left on their own. So, so the Gemara is going to ask, what's the difference? Why in one place are you calling it Nitushim and one of them you're calling it Ritushim? Like, what's the difference between them? Ritushim with a Resh. So he says, Nitushim de Balkurchan, right? It says over there that Nitushim means that it was taken away from them against their will. As the Pasuk says by Shemitah, that in the seventh year you have to leave it against your will. Afkata de Malka, right? And therefore it's like that the king, is, so that's why you're leaving it. Retushim means that it's coming from Midatan, because it's written, Em Albanim Rutasha. So, if it's Kiru, that they did it on their own. So, that's why the difference between them, and therefore, obviously, it's going to have different halachot as well.